Here we have the structure of a skeletal muscle fiber. A bundle of, of muscle fibers is called a fascicle. The main component of a muscle fiber is the sacromere, which is made up of myofilaments, which are these small portions. A bundle of myofilaments is called a myofibril, and a, myo, and a bundle of a myofibril makes up the single muscle cell. Within the myofibril, we have Z-discs, I-bands, and A-bands. The plasma, the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber is called the psych, sarcolemma. The cytoplasm is called the psychoplasm. And we also have a psychoplasmic reticulum known as SR, which forms a network around the myofibrils. And squeezed between the myofibrils, you have the mitochondrion and transverse tubules and the triad, which is um, terminal cisternae and transverse tubules together. This is a cross-section of a muscle cell at rest. Okay, this is showing the action potential entering the axon terminal. Um, the action potential arrives at the synaptic knob. The calcium channels here open and uh, allow calcium to move into the cell. The increased calcium causes the synaptic vesicles, which are filled with acetylcholine, to fuse with the membrane. Here we have the nerve impulse arriving at the axon terminal of the motor neuron and triggers the release of acetylcholine. The ACH diffuses across the synaptic cleft and binds to the receptors in the motor neuron plate and triggers a muscle action potential AP. Over here we have the opening of the voltage regulated ion gates and the crea it creates an action potential um, potassium and sodium. A wave of action potential spread from the end plate in all directions. When this wave of excitation reaches the T-tubules, it continues down them into the sarcoplasm. Action potentials open voltage-regulated ion channels in the T-tubules. These are physically linked to calcium channels in the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, SR. Thus, the gates in the SR open as well, and the calcium diffuses out of the SR down its concentration gradient into the cytosol. The calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum is binded by calcequestrin previously to that. All right. Here we have a sarcomere, which extends from Z-disc to Z-disc and is the basic unit of muscle. We have the light I-band, which is made up of thin filaments. We have the H-band, which is made up of thick filaments. And we also have the Z-disc, which is a fine, dense line forming sarcomere, sarcomere boundaries in striated muscles. We also have a portion of thin filament, thin filament here, which has a troponin complex, actin, and tropomyosin. And we have a thick filament, which has a tail and two globular heads. As the calcium enters the cytosol, calcium binds to the troponin on, of the thin filaments. The troponin myosin complex changes shape and sinks deeper into the grooves of the thin filament, exposes the active sites on the actin filaments, and makes them available for binding to the myosin heads. Here are the active sites. The myosin head must have ATP molecule bound to it to initiate the contraction process. The head temporarily keeps the ATP, the ADP and phosphate group bound to it after it contracts. The cocked myosin binds to an exposed active site on the thin filament, forming a cross bridge between the myosin and the actin. Myosin releases the ADP and the phosphate and flexes into a bent low energy position, tugging the thin filament along with it. This is called the power stroke.
the head remains bound to the actin until it binds to a new ATP.